Hi there, my name's Aaron Lanterman, and the chaos you just heard, assuming you've made it this far, is a mock-up I made of Configuration 2 from the Bukla 700. So the configurations here are equivalent to what Yamaha calls algorithms. The circles represent oscillators, and there's four of them, and the triangles represent indices that are basically amplifiers. So a combination of an oscillator followed by an amplifier is what Yamaha would call an operator. But the way Buchla set it up here, we have some more flexibility. In a previous video, I implemented this algorithm in Cherry Audio Signs. For this video, I implemented the algorithm using Mazel, which is a modular software synthesizer that uses a text-based patching language. If you're not familiar with Mozilla, I would invite you to check out an introductory video I made last week. Now, the Buchla 700 gives you the option of passing signals through these nonlinear wave shapers A and B, and that's an important part of the Buchla paradigm. I'm not modeling this wave shaping at the moment, but we could do that in Mozilla if we wanted. It's hard to see what this is at first glance because it's tangled up to save space. But if you trace this through, you'll see it's basically a ring of four FM operators in a feedback configuration with a tap here and another tap two operators later. In my mockup, I take one of the taps and put them out the left channel and the other tap and put it out the right channel. This algorithm caught my eye because while the DX7 is capable of one, two, and three levels of feedback, it's not capable of four levels of feedback, and the Yamaha TX81Z isn't either. Now, I don't know if any of Yamaha's newer eight operator instruments are capable of a four operator feedback loop. I couldn't find a comprehensive list of algorithms. If anybody knows for sure, please leave a comment below. So here's the Moselle patch I made. I'll include this code in the description below so you can try it out in Mozilla yourself and play around with it. The four operators I've created using this FM algo block. Now, we could also create this using basic oscillator blocks, but I think using the built-in FM algo block is probably more efficient and it's certainly more convenient. So FM algo has a convention where if you type for instance, freak one, where you have one character after the freak here, that defines what is conventionally a carrier. And the default output of FM algo is going to be the sum of the outputs of your carriers. I don't actually use the default output here. So if you have another character after that, that defines a modulator. So when I define freak one one, the output of freq11 is going to automatically modulate freq1. Similarly, freq111, that automatically modulates freq11, and freq1111 <laughs> automatically modulates freq111. Mozilla is nice in that pitch here automatically includes the effect of your modulation wheel and your pitch bend and all of that. Now, that's default behavior. You can override that if you want. So the amplitude of each of the oscillators I'm specifying here using these gain inputs. And here I'm using breath control, CN3, foot control, and balance. Those are just the names of the various controllers that showed up when I turned knobs on my MIDI controller. And the example you heard at the beginning of this clip was just basically me changing those knobs to change the amount of modulation from one oscillator to the next. So in this naming convention, there's no way for me to indicate that I want oscillator 1111 to be modulated by the output of oscillator 1. That's where this plus input comes in. It allows us to provide other modulation sources. In this case, we're using the quote-unquote control output of oscillator 1. And this is a little confusing because you think of control as an input to something. So what's the control output? Well, Mozilla has a convention where the standard audio output of an oscillator, once you go above a certain frequency, it actually starts ramping down the amplitude as you go higher in frequency, 
which we don't want in this FM modulation context. So the control output is an output of an oscillator that doesn't have that change of amplitude with frequency. So here I'm defining my ring. Then with make bus, I'm creating the stereo signal that actually comes out of our patch. So I'm taking the output of oscillator one up here and the output of oscillator 111 and I'm using what's called the pre-gain output because I'm using the gain here to control the amount of modulation. I want to just get the raw output of the oscillator that's going from like minus one to one. I'm wanting that without this gain operation. So that's why I'm using pre-gain here. The pre-gain output also doesn't have that lowered amplitude with higher frequency I talked about earlier. The oscilloscope you saw earlier was taking its inputs from oscillator 1 and oscillator 111. Similarly, we're using the pre-gain outputs of those oscillators. And for our sync input to our scope, we're using the sync out from a dummy oscillator that we made here that has our main pitch times 0.25. Because if you look up here, I basically hardwired the FM ratios. And here I set it up so that we would be trying to sync on the lowest pitch. And note, I had to make this dummy oscillator because FM algo doesn't have sync outputs. If you are curious about the Buchla 700 architecture in general, you should check out the ID700 self synth by John Schatz. I also have a four part series here on YouTube where I try implementing the architecture using Super Collider. You can get the source code to that from my B700-ish GitHub repository. I also want to mention that I made a video comparing the algorithms in the Buchla 700 with those in the Yamaha TX81Z.